In this movie, we will look at building colliders for environmental objects that you would get out of the Poser library of props and rooms and things like that. In our previous movie, we took a look at examining some of the props that would be in Poser in the Game Development Edition and how to analyze whether you want to use them or not. Here's another thing that will come into the mix. It's like, well, how am I going to build colliders for these things? What are colliders? It's what prevents your game character in Unity or other objects that have physics applied to them from going through walls and going through floors, things like that. So there are times you would want to actually build the colliders in Unity, and there's times you would want to build them in Poser. Well, we'll take a look at why in each case right here. I have created a simple scene here with the Science Fiction Room A, which is in the Places category of the Props Library. Now it's very dark. As I roll my mouse over it, we see some of the polygons for the different regions. Well, Unity doesn't care about lighting in Poser at all, so I don't either. And the way we make it easier to see the scene is simply coming down and changing the document preview to smooth lined. The reason this works the best is it kind of applies a generic lighting from the top, so we get some shading a little bit to help see form, but more importantly is we can see the actual polygons that make up some of the objects in the scene. For example, in this bit of plumbing or whatever it is, if we zoom into this just a little bit, we can see that it is a reasonably high-res, not totally high-res, loop, like a steering wheel, and it's got all these segments with multiple polygons. So, do you want to build the colliders in Poser, or do you want to build them in Unity? How's the game going to be played? That will answer that question. If you want a character that, if this is a first-person shooter or something like that, to be able to hide behind some of these objects in the scene, while there's robots shooting at them or other players, then we need to have a fairly detailed collider object. And the easiest way to do that is to simply repurpose the gameplay geometry into a collider object as well. So there's two pieces to it, the gameplay geometry you see and the collider that the characters run into. If you don't need this level of detail, you don't need these little places to hide, then it's probably best to build the collider objects in Unity. And that's done with geometric tools that they have, just creating simple cubes that go around the wall and the contents. We would create a cube that would include these columns right here and the wall, so game players couldn't go through that. Let me back out a little bit, and you may say, well, wait a second, doesn't Poser have primitive objects too? And the answer is yes, but you really don't want to try to build colliders out of those objects because Poser plays by a different set of rules than 3D programs, and Unity is much closer to a 3D program than, say, Poser is. Poser is a content manipulation program, and 3D programs that actually build this stuff are content creation programs. Why is that different, and how does it play into the colliders? Well, if we come over here to the props area, and let me scroll up a little bit, we've got the sci-fi room places, we'll close up places, and underneath places down here we have primitives. When I use the word primitives, I mean something that we can control and modify independently. In Poser, if you put a ball into a scene, or if we use some of the basic cubes that they have in here, cylinders, these types of things for colliders, you can't control the mesh on those individually. The result, if you use these shapes, is bringing in too much geometry for the sake of a collider. So it's just better to create simple primitive colliders in Unity and complex colliders like we're going to do here inside of Poser. All right, let's get on to building the collider. The first thing we'll want to do, since we want this level of resolution for the collider for our hypothetical game, is that we will come up to Edit, Duplicate Room A. Now when we do this, we can see that we have a change up here at the top in the preview window. We see we've got Figure 2, and I'm going to switch to Body right here. If I come over to Figure 2 Properties, I'm going to name this one Room A Collider. Now, I'm going to leave the visibility checkbox enabled right here. Come back to room A, and then I'm going to disable the room A visibility. Why go through these steps? Well, as you export from Poser into Unity, the only things that get exported are items that are actually visible. So this allows us to create one Poser scene for multiple output intents. So we've got the geometry for gameplay, and we're going to have the geometry for the collider object all in one file, co-located, perfectly registered, so we don't have to worry about lining things back up again in Unity. That's a huge bonus to do it this way. Let's go to Room A Collider. If I turn off visibility right here, now we can see nothing selected. This is just a way to verify that what I'm going to be modifying in the geometry is only the collider itself. 
And the way we modify this is a similar way to what we learned in the preceding movie by adjusting the resolution of the mesh. We'll come over here and I'm zooming in on this because this is probably the most important detail to see if the fidelity of the geometry holds up when we start pulling out and reducing the polygons that make up these shapes. So with body selected for room collider A, I'm going to come up to figure, reduce polygons. Now, if we scroll this all the way over here to the right, we'll see this object contains about 37,000 polygons. We want to reduce this significantly. We don't need this high level of resolution for a collider, but we need a decent level of resolution to hold things up. If we come down to about half that, 17,000, that's probably overkill for a collider. In Unity, we make colliders out of very few polygons, and we'll do the same thing here. So typically, when I'm using a hard edge environmental mesh in Poser, I'll go ahead and reduce it by a factor of about 75%, and click OK. We see the screen jump just a little bit, and now we have a reduced polygon collider object right here. If we come up to figure right here again and say reduce polygons, if I scroll this all the way over to the right, we'll see we've got about 8,500 polygons. So we significantly reduced the count and created a detailed but low-resolution collider mesh.